Ed, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to hear about your role and what you're doing at Anthem. Yeah, well, I'm super glad to glad to be here. Um, you know, Anthem is one of the largest healthcare companies in the in the country, and as the CTO, there's a lot of things that we're doing. But I think they fall into a couple groups. One is to drive really just better transparency into how we operate. But we're also very focused on improving the member experience, and you know, for all of us that are customers, making it easier to to leverage your healthcare. You know, the broader mission is to improve the the communities that we work in, and I think technology is a big enabler to that. So, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing to drive innovation and provide that access to consumer data? You know, it's a it's a it's actually a big challenge in, in the healthcare space because you want to provide access, but you also need to protect the asset, of right? Course, it's, yeah. it's incredibly important. So sometimes we go slow because we're being extra careful about protecting really what all yeah. of us expect us to protect. Um, but we're doing a number of things to still use, you know, understand the context of the data and personalize the experience, maybe try to make more outbound calls that have context so that we can understand care gaps, things like that. Um, also using the data to find uh, fraud, waste, and abuse, which when you hear about the numbers in healthcare, it makes you really mad because we all pay for that. So if we can improve that, uh, find issues, then we can you know, help to better leverage our healthcare dollars. And I think that's, that's really where you have a big impact, whether it's uh, commercial healthcare situations, um, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, you know, all different life uh, situations where you really want to leverage that investment. So imagine that means you have to do a lot of experimentation with your team on what works, what's the right data to to provide and and defining that security profile. How do you organize to drive that experimentation and innovation? You know, it's the the whole organization question I think is one that uh, a lot of companies are really struggling with. Um, we've, we've been going through um, and really trying to rethink the operating model around how we align around capabilities or services that make up our business. You know, too often companies will change their organization and we have a lot of changes and I think organizations get tired of all the change. Um, but by aligning on the capabilities or the services and then really trying to drive value in those services, you can make a big company a little bit smaller, a little bit more uh, contained. Um, and you also drive accountability in the process. And I think this shift from being very project centric to being more capability and service oriented really helps us, you know, do better in small chunks. And then hopefully all those chunks come together and deliver a great you know, service to our, our, our members. And so I, I love that focus on breaking down the problems. How do you get clear on what is the customer outcome? How do you define that? Or do you have a process for, for getting clear on that with your team so they can? you know, go slow to go fast. Right. You know, it's, um, there's so many different interactions. It is really hard and thinking about kind of an end to end journey. Mm -hmm. And we can all put ourselves in that position, right? We all have healthcare. We all, you know, whether we've had children or gone to the doctors, you kind of have a sense of what the experience that you'd like, but really thinking about minimizing the handoffs, how to make each inter have fewer interactions that are more meaningful, um, helping providers, deliver, you know, focus on delivering medicine and, and help as opposed to just getting reimbursed, right? There's a lot of things that are probably aren't value added interactions. So a question, because, you know, healthcare, I would imagine you don't want to fail, but, no. to, yeah. <laughs> to, but to experiment and to invent, you know, failure is required at least from, you know, the technology that you're trying to provide. How do you all talk about Failure, because I imagine that's, you know, an interesting discussion in a healthcare organization. You know, failure for us is ha somebody having to have repeat calls on something or right. somebody calling for a, a, a claim issue that we should have resolved ourselves, right? Th these are, this is friction that you can avoid. You know, when we look at fraud, waste, and abuse and we find things that we paid for that we shouldn't have after the fact, well, you can't really go and get the money back. Right. You failed. But there are other things that really get to the the point of need that we try to really never mess up and try to always be there. And I think that sense of you know focus on always being up, always being there at those points of need, sometimes forces us to go slower, be more conservative, and and sometimes that's that's advantageous because you don't have to go through a series of mistakes and you can leapfrog, um, you know, because right. you've gone slow. But uh, 
you know, I think we really try to balance that on behalf of our members and, and providers. It's just there's so many different constituents. Sometimes we're not, you know, all the pieces don't don't fit together the way you'd like. And, you know, we've had some discussions about diversity and inclusion, and obviously your consumer base is very diverse. Mm-hmm. And so is there something that you do to ensure that your team kind of reflects the consumer base that you're serving? You know, I think there's a lot of things that Anthem r- really wants to reflect the communities that we support and, and service. Um, yeah, I think we actually have a, a relatively d- diverse organization because, you know, the people who do it tend to have more productive teams. They tend to uh, uh, have a, a better engagement scores from their, their their teams, really because they're inclusive of a bunch of different ideas. Um, so I think because we reward that, um, it starts to become more of the culture. Now, are, are we ever perfect? No. Do we... Uh, we're still in a, in a massive war for talent and looking for, you know, atypical um, ways to bring in talent uh, may give us opportunities in, in certain places. And so I think we're constantly looking for better ways to attract really good talent. And uh, and when people leave, we really ask ourselves, I mean, because that's a that's a fail. We had somebody who came in and it just it didn't didn't work for them or, or for us. And uh, so constantly trying to do better with that, I think, is something that we take very, very seriously. Ed, could you say a little bit more about this, the culture of innovation that you're trying to create at Anthem? I think innovation, a lot of people talk about it very broadly. Mm. Um, it really comes in little behaviors around the organization. And I think rewarding that experimentation. Um, we talk about, you know, technology is not some big factory where people are kind of churning out widgets. It's about that, um, the creativity, the curiosity that comes with you know, really like wondering, is there a better way to do something and challenging the status quo? I think a lot of times, sometimes there's an innovation, you know, like around machine learning or something that kind of unlocks some potential of data and it's a big deal, right? And you hear about those things. Um, but the thing that I think is really important and it's unique is as we align the organization to be more service focused or more kind of own a capability, mm-hmm. we can innovate each one of those. We can do innovative things in end user computing or end user services. We can do innovative things with automation around uh, identity and access management that, you know, maybe it doesn't rise to the the top of curing cancer, but every one of those things that we recognize in the organization when they come out um, really are the breadcrumbs of, in, of innovation. And I think it, it makes people realize that, you know, the area that we're in really highlights the creativity, the curiosity of the team. And then I think the collaboration when we make it work well all of a sudden you put together something, a bunch of pieces that are more impactful than just all of the individual innovation. So we don't always get it right. I think, you know, sometimes yeah. you you do things the way you did them yesterday, but uh, but I, I like to see when somebody's reinvented or found a new way to do something that's really creative or unique. Yeah, and I love your, your comment about removing friction mm-hmm. from the process and it really evolving the customer experience. So it's, you know, painless. It's an even bigger, I think, personal change to take accountability in it, right? Instead of getting requirements from somebody that you go do your thing, you're having to think, well, what should claims processing look like? What what should enrollment and billing as a as a capability that every insurance company has? What should it be like? What should right. what should it work? And uh, and part of that shift enables us to be more agile. Mm-hmm. And by agile, I mean kind of little agile. We can do more iterative development. And then as we develop tools and better technique, we sort of become the big agile, right? There are things that you learn in healthcare from startups in the space. Is that a, a challenge or is it a source of inspiration? You know, I think it inspires, it inspires me because I've been in and out of healthcare over my career and I've worked in, in a, you know, had the opportunity to work in a bunch of different industries. Uh, the thing that strikes me is healthcare has its, a very complicated acumen because there's so many di- different business models, right? Right, and uh, some of the the rules are very medical or clinical in nature, so it's hard. They're hard to understand, um, but there's an awful lot of similarities, right? How you uh, automate a, a pipeline, or how, how you build your code. That's how you debug right. your code. How you right. uh, uh, leverage data. Uh, provision uh, different services are actually very similar. So you can learn a lot from adjacent or near adjacent uh, industries where they had maybe a, that same need, but just earlier. So there's right. some things that you know we're doing for the, the first time, but maybe it's been done in retail or it's been done in airlines for a long time. 
So can we leverage those experiences? And, uh, and you know, to, to some degree that can create a magical outcome because you know right. it's right, but now you've applied it to a different problem. And I think that's a, a great source of innovation um, internally. You don't have to invent it for the first time. Right. You may just be reuse, resolving it, repurpose. reusing it in, in, a very, in a very unique way. So Ed, thank you so much for taking the time and sharing with us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's been fun. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>